Okay, in this video we're checking out the Foxier Mix uh, HD FPV camera. This is similar to the Runcam Split Mini version 2 and the Cadex Turtle version 2. And uh, I don't know, they've taken a while to get this out. I'm not sure exactly why they were uh, doing a number of revisions on this. And uh, I'm going to get all the boring stuff out of the way first. We'll look at the camera and the board here uh, in a short second here. Uh, just give you all the stuff that it comes with. It doesn't come with the video transmitter. I was just testing it out just now. Get a little mounting bracket like you do on the all the other ones. It looks the same. You do get an adapter that converts it from the micro size 19 uh, millimeter to the 28 millimeter full size camera size. It does come with this little uh, micro SD card um, protector so it doesn't get uh, pop out. You get a wiring loom. Of course, it plugs into the plug here that's on the board. And we'll talk about there in a second. It does come with some mounting hardware here. You get some uh, M3 nylon standoffs and M2 nylon standoffs. And that's because uh, the board here can either mount 30 by 30 or 20 by 20. So you see the 30 by 30 holes and then the 20 by 20 holes. This PCB here you can remove the outer portion if you're just going to use the 20 by 20 size. And uh, I'll probably, um, I'm definitely going to be doing that uh, at some point after this video is made. And then you get uh, some washers and screws for mounting. Uh, here is what the camera looks like. And very similar to the turtle. It does come in the box uh, separated. So here's another one. I got uh, I got the fluorescent green one here. And it comes like this with a little uh, plug not plugged in. Um, it's not, it's actually detached in the box. And I'm not sure if they do it for shipping reasons. Um, there are other colors available. Black, purple, and I think um, pink, possibly. I don't remember exactly. Um, but yeah, this was not a connected here. It's just, uh, you know, it's basically just plugs on top here, but there's nothing holding it down like you do, like you see on the, on the Split Mini V2. So when you mount it, you probably need to put something there between, say, your frame or another board just to secure that down a little bit, or maybe, maybe put some hot glue around here or something like that. Uh, I don't think it'll pop off too easily, but in a crash, you never know. Uh, you probably want to put some some sort of foam or something on top of that to wedge it in there just to hold that down. That's one thing that I think um, could be an improvement already. Now there's a four pin plug over here. Basically it's going to be uh, voltage, ground, video in, and OSD. So uh, that is a 1.25 millimeter connector there. It's actually the exact same pin out as the one that's on the turtle, uh, but the, the controller board on the turtle is, is reversed from the one in the Fox here. So you, uh, you'd have to do some, if you want to use that one, you have to uh, reverse the wires, but I won't be showing you that in this video. If you don't want to use the connector, you can use the solder wires or solder pads here. And basically it's in the same order. It's upside down here. Let me just flip it over here. So get a voltage ground, video in, OSD, and then the last pad there is the voltage sensor pin pad if you want to use that to use the built-in OSD and I'll show you that. It's just like uh, any other Fox here camera. It does have the voltage sensor line for the OSD. If you want to monitor your battery voltage through the camera you can do that but the voltage sensor line is not on the connector. It's only available through that solder pad. Um, if you don't use that then it'll just default to whatever's coming through on VC, v, VCC. So if you're using a BEC on your flight controller and for supplying 9 volts or 5 volts that's what you're going to see in the OSD. Here's the other side of the board. You have a little microphone there uh, for the audio. Um, yeah, there's the micro SD card slot. It takes up cards up to 64 gigabytes. And they recommend a class 10 or higher. Now the audio on here is very, I think it's attenuated because it doesn't sound as loud as um, the, on the uh, Turtle and on the uh, Split Mini. So they, I'm thinking then flight that this, this audio is actually gonna sound better. All right, so some quick measurements here, uh, 19 millimeters on the width of the camera. And I believe it's gonna be 19 also for the height. And then this camera does seem a bit uh, longer here uh, than on the uh, Split Mini and the Fox, or the uh, Cadex Turtle, 26.7 millimeters in length. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll bring in the other cameras, but this definitely uh, longer. Uh, than the other two competitors. And then the weight of the camera and just the board, no other wires or anything. And we're coming in at 18.8 grams. 
you know, if you compare this to the Split Mini version 2, it's uh, lighter, coming in at 13.2 grams. I don't know what the turtle is, I don't have one that's actually out um, that I can pull off of a craft, so uh, just go look at my video. Uh, I'll put links to all the other videos in the description, and you could have the weight in that video somewhere. Uh, just comparing, this is the um, actually the old version of the Split Mini version 2. This is a newer version, I'll show you that here in a second. But if you just compare the where the mount screw mount holes are right there, you can see how much the Fox Ear sticks out compared to the Split Mini version 2. And then here's the camera sensor unit for the Split Mini version 2 updated version with the M12 lens. And I think it's even shorter on this one, so I'll put the screw holes together here. You can see there the difference in where the mount hole point is and how much the lens is going to stick out. So obviously your if your frames are going to need to be redesigned for this uh, dimensions of this particular case and lens. Okay, so one more thing before I uh, turn this on and show you the settings. Uh, there are a couple pads here. Uh, looks like it's labeled TX2 RX2. So it's possible that you might be able to uh, solder this up to your flight controller and control it via camera control. I haven't, I haven't actually tested that yet. I will do that in a future video. I have to probably uh, take some time and you know, put this in something and actually test that out. But that's what that's for. I know that that's kind of hit and miss on a lot of flight controllers. It works for some enough for others. So that's good. that testing is going to take a little bit more time. Uh, the other thing is uh, there's a button here for starting and stopping video. It does auto record. That's the default setting when you turn it on. And then when you power off or if you unplug the battery, it does auto save the file. You might lose the last two seconds of the file, it says. But there's a button there, for, obviously for the 20 by 20, but, but there's also one on the other side here if you're using it as a 30 by 30. Obviously they want this button accessible if, you, if you're mounting it as a 30 by 30. Uh, but it, the button does does the same function as the other button over here. It's just start it's just basically a, a mode or a power button. If you if you long press the power button, it'll turn on and off the camera. I think it's more than three seconds. But yeah, this will start and stop your recordings, uh, just like it does on like the Cadex Turtle or Split Mini. Um, but yeah, this one is on the outside. And of course, if you decide to cut off the external portion of the PCB, this part's this little button's going to go with that. That but the uh, button over here and the 20 by 20 side is. Uh, the exact same function. Okay, we're going to turn this on here and I'm going to go ahead and control everything via the uh, the joystick controller that I came with. Uh, now the manual, and I actually didn't show you the manual here, it does come with a small manual. Um, it doesn't indicate as to whether or not it will work with uh, your flight controller or not. At least I can't tell from what is here, uh, but when you go into the menu, let me just show you that really quick. If you go into the menu, uh, and actually what it auto records is so you have to, you see that there, you have to stop the recording to get into the menu. So press the button, stop the recording, and then press the center button on the joystick and then you go into the menu here. And if you go down to, where is it? If you go down to here where it says control mode, it says flight control or PWM. I think that has to do with those two pads on the flight controller for the RX2, TX2, but it doesn't seem to talk about this in the manual. So this is why I have to come back to this in a future video because I'm not exactly sure how that's going to work and I have to test that out. But yeah, this does seem like it should work. I just don't know how to get it to work. So I'll have to make another video for that later. Okay, so we're back out of the menu. Uh, as you can see here, we have the standard Fox your OSD, power on time, voltage, and pilot name on there. I did try to go and see if we could change the pilot name by long pressing the up button or long pressing the side button. Uh, none of that seems to do anything. So yeah, I don't know how to change the pilot name on this. I'll have to figure that out and get back to you guys on that. But if you want to turn off the OSD, you just go into the menu and it's uh, one of these options here. It's OSD display, you go in here and then you can just turn it off and we go out. Okay, so then we go out and then we see that, that the uh, OSD is now gone. Now there's another function on here that isn't on the Split Mini or the Turtle is that you can play back your uh, files on in your goggles or whatever if you have the OSD joystick or if you get the flight controller camera control thing to work then you can do it with your transmitter and play back files and watch it on your goggles or monitor. You just, right, just press the right button 
Yeah, so you press it twice and uh, you'll, you'll, it toggles between either the menu or this basically DVR playback function. So back out, menu, and then you have this DVR playback function. And then if you have more than one recording, you'll have a bunch of recordings here. And then you just hit the center button to play. You can see here, this is where I was messing around and it'll play that file. And you can pause by pressing the center button and then, yeah. So you can um, play back the files in your goggles if you want, which is something that you can't do with the Turtle or the Split Mini. Okay, so let's go into the uh, menu here. I'll show you everything in a little more detail. So we got the movie size, and you can choose between 1080p 60, 1080p 30, 720, 120, or 720, 60. I think those are the only four. Yeah, those are the only four. I'm going to be probably just sticking to 1080 60. Exposure, you can it, it basically the values can go zero to negative two to positive two, so you can adjust that here if you want to change your exposure value. White balance here, here we have auto, daylight, cloudy, fluorescence, and tungsten. Those are the options in metering mode. This is uh, similar to the camera center, multi spot, wide dynamic range. You can turn that on or off. Loop recording, uh, you can do set that to. You know, what I think a certain file size, like a minute, three minutes or five minutes, I will be leaving that off. Auto record is set to on, so as soon as you plug it in, it will start recording right away. And then of course it has the power save or the file save function. If you have a crash or something, your battery gets ejected, it will save your file. And then here you can turn the microphone on or off. They call it voice recording. So if you turn that off, then it won't record any audio. Field of view, you have wide, medium, and narrow. So let me just show you the field of view on the wide setting here. Let's um, exit out. And you can kind of see here the bookcase on the right, uh, the ceiling fan, light, and then you can see the door over here on the left on the wide field of view. And um, someone ha actually asked me a question about this um, field of view thing comparing to other cameras. I'll show you that at the end. Uh, I had some uh, I did a posting on my community channel uh, for some Q&A, and so I'm going to be answering those at the end of the, at this video. And then if we go into the menu here and we change the field of view to medium. Okay, put it out of here. So this is medium field of view. So it looks pretty similar. You can see the bookcase there and the door over there. Not, not a huge difference. Alright, so let's try the narrow field of view. And again, you see the door and the door there and the bookcase there. So it doesn't seem like it is much of a difference really between narrow or wide. Let's go back to wide. Yeah, it is a little bit of a difference. You can see more of the door over here and more of the window over there. But yeah, uh, between wide and narrow, uh, not a whole lot of difference. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is the screen ratio. It defaults to 16.9. You can switch this to 4.3, and then what that does is, as you can see here, what, what happened to the field of view? It's cropped in. So the vertical field of view is about the same, but the horizontal field of view is, is basically cropped off. So like the the right side and the left side. See so the door here has disappeared. It's basically chopped off. So if you have four three goggles, uh, this is the view you're going to get. Basically a cropped in view of the sensor. So the sensor is a 16.9 sensor. Now I'm going to change that back to 16.9. So, okay, so the rest of these items here, OSD display, I showed that already, you can turn it on and off. Here you can, uh, invert mode, that should be pretty obvious, you can 
actually flip the camera upside down if you want the ribbon or this little cable to come out of the bottom instead of the top. You can just do that. I'll leave that off. TV mode, um, NTSC repel, depending on what you like, I leave the NTSC. Light frequency, 50 or 60 hertz, standard stuff there. I think control mode, I already showed you that before. Auto boot is, is um, currently sits on, so basically when you power it up, the camera will turn on and start recording. Uh, you can have it turn that off and it'll actually, they actually have to power the camera on manually by pressing the button on the side of the board there. That's if, like a, if, you, if you anticipate not using the camera, if you're like powering on and don't like want the camera to be on, you could, you could change that, but I don't see any real reason to do that. And then it's format, you can format the SD card there in this setting, and then system here, you can factory reset their system info and card info. So in the card info, it's going to show you the card you're using and how full it is. And then uh, under system info, it just shows you the firmware version, January 4th, 2019, and the version numbers. So as new new versions of the firmware come out, you can update this uh, if you have a, uh, happen to have an older version. So there, currently there isn't any other firmware available, as I can tell. And that's it. You can change the language, of course, there. Now, I went through all these, and I don't see any way to change, for example, um, brightness, contrast, saturation, or sharpness. All those seem to be whatever the camera comes with is default, which is kind of a bummer because I, I do I do tend to think that these cameras tend to be over-sharpened, and I like to do things like reducing saturation so that I could, have, um, I could basically uh, adjust the color and stuff in post-processing, but they've kind of put the what they think is the best settings for just general use. So we'll have to see what that looks like. Um, obviously we'll see that in the flight footage later. But yeah, um, uh, it's really unfortunate that you don't have the ability to change this like you do on the Turtle. Um, I'm hoping that they will add that in a future firmware release. I'm hoping. I have I had did, I have a, a question uh, to them, and uh, hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll respond to my question as to whether or not that'll happen. But this is what you have at the moment. Hopefully the settings are good enough um, for the recording that we want. Hopefully better than the one that's coming out of the, the Turtle or the Split Mini version. At least that's what I'm hoping for. Okay, so some of you guys are asking what the FPV feed looks like compared to the Split Mini. Um, it doesn't look as muddied as the Split Mini. It's actually a little bit darker than the other thing. One, uh, the Split Mini FPV, FPV, FPV feed view is uh, a little bit overexposed. Uh, but, you know, it's really hard to tell because everyone's eyes are a little bit different. Uh, I just want to show you what it looks like in the monitor here. It does look like it's a bit more detailed. It's not as washed out or muddied, I guess, is I guess what people would, would say the Split Mini version 2 looks like. So, I mean, yeah, to me that's what it looks like. I don't think it looks like like a lot better than the Split Mini version 2. I think it's probably similar to say like uh, the Falkor, if you guys know what the Falkor is, or the SDR2 uh, from Cadex. Uh, pretty detailed, uh, but yeah, it's really hard to just show you through the monitor here and what you're going to see in your goggles and what, what kind of equipment you have you know it might just be totally different so that's a, that's about the best I can do um, I'll actually I'll be, I will of course show you a DVR recording from my fast Air goggles as well um, you guys can compare it to what you see here on the monitor Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and end uh, this part of the video here with some Q&A. I asked you guys uh, for send me some questions about this uh, in an earlier post on my community section. Uh, Drunken FPV is asking, would you, I would like to know the bitrate and latency of the camera. Yeah, so the bitrate is the same as the Split Mini version 2 and the Turtle. It's uh, at 1080p, 60 frames per second. It is uh, 30 megabits, I believe. And in terms of the latency, I don't usually run latency tests, but I was told that the latency is around 20 milliseconds, but I don't have the equipment to actually verify that. Okay, so question from A. Pippet. Uh, my question also, my hope from this camera is the lens isn't made from plastic, but made from glass. And uh, yeah, it, the lens here is an M12 lens, and it is actually made from glass. Uh, the one on the 
new split mini um, version 2 updated version with the M12 lens. I believe that's glass as well. The Cadex Turtle is a polycarbonate lens, but I believe that they're also updating that to a glass lens. Okay, so Nighthack is asking, can you compare the field of view and the FPV of the cameras in the competition? So, um, yeah, so I'm just going to release some video samples. They're just uh, here on my desk. The camera's in the same position. They're roughly, I would say, pretty much the same. They're around 165 to 170 degrees field of view diagonally. Uh, the vertical and horizontal field of views are really close on all three. So, yeah, they've pretty much matched uh, what you see out there from the other cameras. Yeah, so unfortunately I don't have any uh, flight footage here for you, so um, I'm going to end the video with just <laughs> of uh, the outside where it's raining, or hopefully I can get a little bit where it's uh, out, stopped raining, but it's been raining all week, and I'll have an updated video as soon as possible with the flight footage, I'm sure that's what you guys are looking for. Yeah, but in the meantime, if you guys have any questions for the next video, leave them down below in the comment section, and I will talk to you guys in the next one.